Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode, another live episode of Jim and Rob Overanalyze Movies, the video podcast for people who love to talk about movies, who are looking for a deeper conversation about the films we watch today. And uh, yeah, today we've got a gooder for you, a banger. Um, tonight, Jim and I are going to overanalyze another 24, 2024 Oscars contender, Alexander Payne's The Holdovers. Uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's get into it. It's time to give my co-host with the most, my very own Borscht bro, Mr. Jim Chaboyko, who is officially unmuted, a welcome. Yay! Hello. Hello, all. Figured you deserve the whole thank you. Oh, but look, I've got my script right in front of your face. Spoiler alert. <laughs> Here are all the questions. <laughs> I'm, I'm putting my hand in front of my own you know lighting, what? which is I'm going to put it me. back up because what you will sure. notice is how much I'm like, unmute Jim. <laughs> and then the next note. There's some all caps there. And, is, uh, uh, oh, because you know what? I am, uh, whoopsie. And quit laughing at your own jokes. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. It's instead of having well, a live studio audience or that that laugh track that that used to be on Mash, where you could see, hear the same guys laugh. Yeah. Over the course of ten years. <laughs> well, uh, it didn't stop me this time. Um, no. <laughs> all right, Jim. Let's get in. Let's let's get into this flick. Certainly. Uh, Here's the log line from IMDb, and it ain't bad. Uh, a cranky history teacher, a cranky history teacher, Jim, at a remote prep school is forced to, to remain on campus over the holidays with a troubled student who has no place to go and a grieving cook. Uh, the student is not a grieving cook. Um, it's just the person that, uh, another person that he's, forced to hang with mm -hmm. uh jim let's let's just get right into it sure give us your spoiler free mm. see it or skip it is it a see it or is it a skip it this is a see it um takes a bit to set up but uh, i quite enjoyed it it was like stumbling on a 1970s novel in several different ways uh and enjoying it uh but uh yeah i'd see say see it yeah i it's a see it for me too jim uh it grew on me like mm. you said, it takes a while to get going, mm. but you see why later, why it kind of eases into the story and eases into the characters. Yeah, by the end of it, it it it, it got me here. Uh, mm. I got a little got a little misty. It did move me. Yeah. All right, uh, with that out of the way, why don't we? Let me get all set up here, Jim. Let's yeah. Let's, uh, let's, the spoiler zone. Damn, I think that was damn near a perfect cue. Uh, let's, I've got a ton of questions for you, Jim. Uh, sure. But I wanted to start with, how did I put it in my notes? Uh, all right, we're safely in the spoiler zone. Am I the only one who got the Charlie Brown Christmas vibes during the tree presentation slash gift giving scene? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I got that a little bit as well. I, frankly, I was surprised the guy was still open on, uh, on, cause I believe he bought the tree on Christmas day. Yeah. Um, yeah. It was after and, she and, had a cocktail yeah. hangover. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So Mary the guy's. Lamb. <laughs> that was a beautiful the composition of that shot if you looked at it again it had the ridge behind it him they had the little trailer set up and it was quite a nice this whole uh movie is uh suffused with nice uh nice shots but and then he you know approaches this poor guy who's still working on christmas and he says yeah fire sale we just have our last couple of trees yeah. here in winnipeg you, you got to be on it by the last week or you're out of luck but uh yeah yeah a it's little bit of Charlie been chopped up into firewood Yes, yeah, yeah. Uh, just to make that, that secondary market, but uh, uh, yeah, no, very much Charlie Brown vibes for a second or two there. It was good. 
would you call this is this a christmas movie oh yeah i I was thinking that too i was like would this be and you know you got the first well they start off with the very first shot is a choir master singing with a choir uh which i can't remember which carol or him it is Uh, but little town of bethlehem uh, it is yes yeah drummer boy yeah and uh uh, that sort of set the tone uh and uh yeah i would i would say definitely i think they should this is sort of a a christmas movie without being sort of in your face about it it happens to be set at christmas time but it's it's uh probably a little more a christmas movie than say die hard is (laughs) but uh, hey i am firmly in the die hard is a solid yeah i am too i I am Uh, too (laughs) that said this one you're right it's not it's set at Christmas. It has a lot of those themes, but it's not. Actually, Die Hard is a great example, Jim. Mm. Both are, they have earned their status as Christmas movies without being super overt about it. Without yeah. saying, this yeah. is a Christmas movie. Yeah. There's the, the all the trappings and all the, the holiday, and there's Christmas parties and stuff like that. But the story itself is about deeper and longer lasting things, too. Well, you know, the, the death of a yeah. son and, and that kind of thing and, and uh, uh, fate and history and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, uh, uh, yeah no, it was. And I, and I liked that it was that they set it up, that it was 1970 going into 71 and that they had. They had New Year's together as well. Uh, yeah, yeah, it was well done. And with all the kind of the all the tra- you know, the snow and the being stuck in the sort of, uh, you know, uh, in New England. And uh, this is our second Massachusetts movie in about a month, by the way. So we're uh, we're looking at a little bit, a little bit of an early theme for 2024 with American fiction was had had parts of it set in, in uh, Massachusetts. Yeah. But uh yeah, you had all the trappings there, the sort of coming into the restaurant and, you know, with the heavy coat on and that kind of thing. And yeah, and the defrosted, that that funny scene where Paul Giamatti is trying to desperately scrape the window because because uh, the kid uh, <laughs> dislocated his shoulder and he's doing such a horrible job of scraping his window. But uh, yeah, yeah, no, it's it, it does. It does cold the tiniest well. scraper. Uh, yeah, yeah. Speaking of which, just a little, quick little sidebar. I loved that moment because that is images of my childhood and even as a 80s teen you know that poorly insulated vehicles yeah (laughs) terrible yeah Yeah. door Uh, doesn't work in this case yeah and that's another thing just a, a a sidebar it's not a huge motif in the film it's more kind of played as a gag but the fact that the his car the hero car isn't it's a vintage car and i'm sure they had to find someone with this vehicle and all that stuff but it doesn't look like a vintage car it doesn't ride like they they, it's there's nothing pretty about it do you know what i mean like it really does look like a a beater of the time Mm-hmm. You know, so like, yeah. the movie being set in 1970. Uh, Jim, let me ask you this. Now, we already talked about the Christmas thing, but it does bring up other movies, including, like I was thinking about Goodbye, Mr. Chips, um, mm. The Dead Poet Society, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, if uh, Robin. <laughs> <laughs> if the teacher there was a crusty, cranky burnout. Uh, yeah. But to me, and I wanted to know about you, to me, though, it also reminded me of No Hard Feelings. I did it, eh? Uh, not as much. I, I'd say closer to sort of Dead Poet Society-ish. Oh, um, yeah. No, no. Yeah. Those, those but, two, the yeah. Goodbye, Mr. Chips, the Dead Poet Society. We've seen a lot of these a teacher in sp- shows kindness and inspires a youth <laughs> yeah yeah connects and with the youth maybe e- not even, inspires them. even in this case if it takes a while that you know like he's not you know maybe a natural empath <laughs> yeah. you know that it's something that, that he he learns over the course of actually a couple of weeks but uh yeah i, I mean uh i spent about the first 
uh, the first act, I thought I, I was, and that's why I was saying that it took a while for it to grow on me. The first act, I was like, oh, I've seen a lot of this before. Mm -hmm. I can sort of see the bully victim narrative come out. They had the sort of the, the the younger guy who was kind of a punk, and and you know, there's obvious victims there. They had the Mormon kid and the Korean kid, and. And I thought, oh, where is this going? And and as soon as that sort of the story was a little more distilled, uh, and they they got rid of uh, most of the, the other the kids cast, yeah, In when a it was helicopter whittled down to three, uh, I thought, okay, here's here's where it's sort of getting a bit leaner, and this is where it's sort of making its mark and becoming a more of a its own movie, I guess. Yeah. Um, on that, yeah, and I, it a hundred percent. Mm -hmm. Up to that point, I'm okay. That's that person. That's that person. Uh, yeah. That said, I was kind of, I was nervous with mm -hmm. Divine's Mary Lamb character. Mm -hmm. And I, I was wondering if she was going to fall into a, ah, here's the wise, the, 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 the magical Negro trope yeah you know the one who you know mentors the mentor yeah. you know mm -hmm. shows him the way mm -hmm. uh, it didn't do that or i don't think it did that what do, what do you think i you know i think each of the characters had an effect on each other but hers was uh and, and by the way i thought she had not that the others were bad but i thought she had like the super authentic uh performance like i believed every word that that she said uh, and uh, you know her motivations and that but kind of it, thing but yeah but she's part of that is she had something to do yeah like yeah. again she wasn't just there to serve giamatti's character yeah yeah she had her own arc mm -hmm. and she wasn't even necessarily there, there's a janitor character that's sort of a fourth in this yeah. and he, he's he's black and uh yeah, you sort of thought, I thought, this isn't going to be like those soap operas where the two black people in town hook up. And I, I think there was a sort of an intimation that he was he was uh, sweet on her, but nothing. we didn't see anything happen no. from that. And and so they, I don't think they took a lot of the... Own, yeah, her, her, her own, own stuff. Arc. Yeah. And and I uh, I, I don't think they took the, the typical uh, pathways that, that the, you know, the makers of this film didn't take the typical path that... That's usually taken. Uh, yeah. yeah, no. So it was, that was refreshing, I thought, too. And she's just as she's just as brittle as them. And she's just and she's swearing along with them. I mean, she believes in God and she doesn't, you know, anytime they blaspheme, she lets them know it. But uh, yeah, it, it uh, she's her own. She's her own woman. And yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. What was <laughs> speak, speak a little bit more about Mary? Uh, mm. <laughs> I'm. How did I put it here? Just a sec. Where, where is it? Ah, there we are. The, now I want to ask you, I want to ask you what your favorite delivery, your favorite line delivery, your favorite delivered line was, because there's a lot of them in here. There are yeah. a, a lot without being just one amazing line after another. Like, mm -hmm. so they hit. Uh, for me though, my favorite was and this is really the tail end of a longer spiel, but it is uh Mary. So make make sure I got my sensor button ready. Uh mm. <laughs> saying to Paul Giamatti's uh cranky old uh cranky old professor uh about Angus, uh the young the the troubled young youth, the callow troubled youth uh yeah. in their charge. <laughs> <laughs> about the Christmas party saying don't f up for the little a <laughs> I love yeah. that I loved her delivery she yeah. gave that heat mm -hmm. but it felt like by then the character's so well set up she mm -hmm. is speaking as a character it's not oh and here's my joke time now sassy yeah. black girlfriend yeah, it wasn't even done with all that much sass. It was just the truth. Like she just sort of well, like she's unafraid of, like you know. She of course she's careful of what she says, you know, who she says things to. But yeah. with him, she's comfortable sort of laying down some uh, some truth bombs, as the kids yeah. say. 
as the kids say. Yeah. Uh, did you have any any favorite lines? You know, the way not so much a line, but a reaction is when um, uh, Angus uh, dislocates his shoulder, and they just show it from. They don't show him be, having it reset and it, you know it, yeah. it's just the Giamatti's reaction like he he he's he's sort of watching he's up against the tile wall and he's watching it and you think he's going to be like ah oh, this is nothing and they do a little bit of thing and, and you can sort of see on his face and goes oh that was nothing and then they do one last little thing and you hear this crack and he goes you know, and, you, like, and you hear the kids scream yeah yeah you know? And uh, I thought that was a real that I laughed out loud. There was a, another one, and I neglected to write it down. About two thirds of the way through the movie, it's a real short one by Paul Giamatti, and I, and I for the life of me, I can't remember it. But I'll, I'll maybe look it up later and add it to the comments. But there's a few good, really good character, and you know, like the best of comedy or dramedy or drama. You know, you know, it's character based, and and uh, there's there's a lot of good, great lines in here that are delivered nicely, and and that that are exact with the character. Yeah. You know, they're that, coming from the character because the characters yeah. developed enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I agree a hundred percent. Um, let's talk a bit about theme here. We see earlier in the first act, all the all the players we think are important, you know, we're like, okay, well, I guess the movie started. And we know who's staying home. The the final player, Angus, has mm -hmm. been added to the sad group of four who are stuck, held over in this, you know, snooty prep school. Yeah, in nineteen seventy, Barton, uh, Barton, <laughs> Barton <Yeah>. men. <laughs> uh what Jim do you think there's this moment where a bullying character just randomly steals the mitt of the little Alex, the little LDS kid, mm -hmm. little uh, 12 or something, yeah, throws it away. And afterwards, Angus says, Oh, it's to make it sting that you have one, and so the sting's there. Mm -hmm. Why do you think we see Alex throw it away and we see it float away? What, uh, I, I thought it was a huge thematic foreshadowing. Yeah. I mean, the kid throwing his own glove into the river, his other he, glove, the other. Bit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I should just mention, I, I just finished watching this a couple of hours ago, actually. <laughs> Everything's still pretty fresh. Um, As did I. Yeah. Oh, did you? Okay, good. Yeah. Um, yeah, that, that's a good point. I, I guess, uh, I'm, and I would, I haven't really thought about that character because that character sort of, you know, goes on his own adventure after, uh, the, the first yeah, act. They bugger there, off but into, <laughs> they go, it's like a it's not even their own adventure. They're just taken yeah. out of the story. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, in a cool way, but, um, it, it's a bit of a pragmatic move. Like if I don't have one, I better, you know, what's the but, point but in I having wanna, the other thing? Regardless, but, I want to get yeah. back to the, the question because yeah. we see this scene, we see the bully take the glove or the mitt, the mm -hmm. mitten, the old cloth mitt, mitten cloth, yeah. you know, whatever wool mitten, throw yeah. one away. He kid can't find it. So in a fit of anger and he's upset uh, especially after Angus says he does that on purpose so that mm -hmm. whenever you see the one mitt, you think of the one you lost. So it stings more. Yeah. The kid throws the other one away. Why are we given that whole thing? Because again, none of these characters we spend, it's almost shortly after we spend no time with any of these characters. Like it's yeah. only yeah. a couple scenes later that one of the kid's dads comes in on a helicopter and says, come on, let's all go skiing. Which is actually super cool. Like, you know, it may be kind of a richy, rich kind of thing to do, but I thought well, that's kind of generous. But anyhow, um, <laughs> yeah, it's, pro it's probably, I, I would imagine. Why don't you that want to answer my question, Jim? <laughs> Lucas, I, 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 Lucas, I keep calling him Lucas, Angus. Uh, I guess he's got wisdom to dispense. I think that's the thing is that he's been through this before. He looks like a guy who's sort of been through the rigors of uh, the uh, the private school we, system. We do learn that this is uh, 
Yeah. He's been kicked out of three schools so far mm-hmm. and is on the cusp of going to military school. And yeah. 1975, that means Vietnam shortly after. Or yeah. 1970, yeah. sorry. Yeah. 1970 yeah. going into 71, but still, you know, they still had until about, I just finished watching Ken Burns' Vietnam War and it started to slow down after Nixon was elected the second time for whatever reason. But anyway, uh, for whatever reason he was elected a second time anyway um but yeah yeah i think it's to show that angus actually had some wherewithal that he wasn't completely helpless he had some wisdom he sort of knew how to cope a bit uh although while not being there completely himself like he's still doing sort of some pretty spontaneous things and and uh he's he's prone to you know certain outbursts and things like that too i you know what i'm I think there's a lot more going on in that, in part because Angus, he has a line in it. But after the line, the kid runs, the, 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 Angus is not really, he's, uh, other than the line he delivers to uh, Alex, I think it's Alex, mm. the little LDS boy, um, yes. he, he's, he's done in the scene. Uh, yeah. There's a reason why pain gives us more. And... Uh, but before I get into that, folks, I will uh, take take shameless advantage of this time and beg you all for a like, a subscribe, and let us not forget to ringy-ding that bell. Um, yeah, Jim, I, I think it's a big chunk of foreshadowing because I think one of the biggest themes in this movie is about letting go. Mm-hmm. The yeah, the, the Alex did exactly what he needed. He cried, he mourned, but he he threw it down, and we see with it as it drifts down the wither, w- drifts down the wither, drifts down the <laughs> river. <laughs> yes, much like a Viking of yore. Mm. <laughs> Put him in the boat. And off he goes. See ya. Um, And we see that come to fruition later in a couple of ways. Um, Most importantly, I think, with Mary's character, Mm -hmm. someone who is still struggling. You know, it's only been months. Months, yeah. Same year. Since her her son, her only son, Mm -hmm. passed Passed or passed away, died in the Vietnam War. Mm. Of course, she's a widower. The father of her son died in an industrial accident, and it's in that third act that kind of as as we start to get to the into the end game, where she at the Christmas trip she goes and visits her sister, somebody yeah. she'd been avoiding, along with a bunch of her cherished baby items for Curtis, her, her, her dead son and putting it in her sister's baby room because her sister's pregnant. And I think that's her act of letting go uh, of freeing herself of, of grieving and, and, and in that grief, freeing herself of it. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, it, it it was it was one of the most beautiful moments, and I think it's also kind of a, a hint of other grieving later in the film, and uh, mm. just a, a bit of a foreshadow. But I think that's why we saw the mint. And what yeah. was otherwise? Well, what's the point of the scene? Like we could just yeah. have the kid. We do, we don't need to see the kid run, and throw it in the river, and then watch it float down the river. Otherwise, yeah, you yeah. Know? Well, you know, and and. I do think there's an aspect of it that's building up a little bit of Angus's character because uh, yeah. otherwise he's just kind of irritating. He oh, also no, I'm com- glad you he, mentioned that. Yeah, because right. and, and the reason like, yeah. the reason why I mentioned that is because the the uh, the Korean kid had a nightmare and and you know and an unfortunate bedwetting. I think I had yeah. an accident. He says and and uh, Angus sort of helps him out with that. He goes, "Don't tell anyone; they'll crucify you." Yeah. And so there's kind of there's not a comedy or a d- tragedy rule of three there, but uh, there's a couple instances where he's like he shows the ability to be like step up anyway. Well, 
in the first scene with Alex, he's kind, he, he's a little dickish. Like he's still yeah. imparting some wisdom about dealing with an asshole, but mm-hmm. he's still a bit of an asshole himself. Yeah, uh, yeah. Whereas with young Mr. Park, there he's actually starting to, some of the edge is coming off. And because they're in the dark and he is sharing a moment, I get mm-hmm. scared too. And some real kindness. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I <laughs> and, and I agree with you because he, I, I like the way you put it. He's, he's we've got to see that the, this kid has been through the mill without us being told it. Yeah. Here's the and, record. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, here's the manila. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Older. Yeah, here's instead of an exposition fire hose, mm-hmm. we don't. We get shown all this stuff, and it's only later that we get details that explain what we were shown mm-hmm. about their character, which yeah, this is well, I mean, it's directed by the same guy who di- directed the election back in the 90s. Yeah, which it, we took a look at a couple of years back yeah, uh, as well. He yeah. still has He's he's maintained. He's retained some skills. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, Jim, what if anything? Well, I actually do think it has some stuff to say about at least about race and class. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not saying it's a you know deeply class conscious film. I don't think it qualifies based on my criteria, but it does have something to say there. Uh, does it also, well, I wanted to ask you about that. And also, do you think it has, it's saying anything or it has anything to say on gender? Hmm. I don't, yeah. I, I actually wasn't even thinking about that. I was I was thinking about, you know, just as we used to classify whether or not a um, film was class conscious. I, I thought a little bit of that. And and race too, as you know, it touches on it a little bit. Yep. Uh, you know, he basically says there's a conversation between uh, uh, Paul. It would, yep. It's Paul Giamatti's character's name, Paul. Paul and Angus, uh, and and they're talking about Vietnam, and they and he says, well, Barton boys don't go to Vietnam, and they say, well, you know, uh, Curtis Lamb did. He goes, yes, Curtis Lamb did. You know, sort of. He doesn't even come out and say it. It's you know because he was black and the, the rest of them are white. Exception proves the rule. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. Uh, and died there at nineteen. Uh, if you remember yeah. that old English pop song, nineteen was no, the no, average no, no, age. Nineteen. The... Nineteen. Yeah. Frankie goes um, to Hollywood. Uh, was it? Don't know. I think it was right, a. You know what? I'll look it up. Yeah, sure. Going back to the thematic. Thing, yeah, though. but I mean, if you if you notice something about gender, I, I don't know that I did. Um, there, like I said, there was there was sort of the 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 natural uh, or natural pairing off of of where the janitor and the cook were friends, and they both happen to be black. But uh, um, which I yeah, which you always see again on soap operas, which is kind of a cynical little move. But it wasn't in this case, I don't think. Um, yeah, and just even one of the more refreshing things is is that Paul Giamatti, uh, his character uh, is Paul uh, is um, he doesn't like hypocrisy and he sees it all over, you know, all over the institution. He sees it with his students. He sees it in some of his past dealings, and and he is conscious of the fact. Like he doesn't seem to be very, despite the fact that he studies old wars, ancient wars, he doesn't seem to be very rah rah for Vietnam. And in fact, he he says as much without coming out and totally saying it. Uh, you know, uh, it, it seems that he he disagrees with it. But anyway, and in that case, he's he's sensitive to Mary and what she's been through, and yeah. and Curtis. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it is interesting. Because I think a lot of this film is about something he says early in the film. You don't know what people have gone through. Mm -hmm. The We are... Oh, how do I put this, Jim? Um, I'm struggling here. 
Yeah, yeah you don't. But it, it's don't assume about others. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there's a great moment. I I think it's. I think the way they've decided to handle it is really solid. The fact that Giamatti is or Paul 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 the character it was a not a rich kid was a scholarship kid um, mm. ran away from home got a scholarship to Barton and buggered off well maybe not ran away from home but and it was only because the previous dean believed in him that he sees Barton as his home and got some Harry Potter notes in this yeah, film. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and I'm being a little serious here. Uh, that he is, that's one of the things he's getting on the other students about. You have the, the nasty bully character earlier in the film basically going, we're not letting the help sit, sit with us, are we? Yeah. <laughs> We and that's pay. what that's when he says, you know, yeah. you don't know what she's been through. And, exactly. Yeah. You know, um, but we find out that he didn't know what Angus had been through until mm. much later in the film. Uh, even at the end, they present, like you said, Jim, and this is a thing I, I, I like about this movie. It does undermine some tropes. Um, at the beginning of the movie, to make sure that we all kind of, understand what a pill Paul is. The Dean, I got to admit, I was kind of on the Dean's side. It's like, you know, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we have principles here at Barton and <laughs> <laughs> principles, Jim, principles. Mm -hmm. Barton men have principles. And the old or the new Dean is like, yeah, I also need to keep the place afloat. Mm -hmm. And what's great about that, what I love about that, Jim, is that afterwards we see that the guy's trying to keep the place afloat. The the heat's turned off. Yeah. You know, most of the building. The they sell the Christmas tree back. They resell to the, Christmas the Christmas tree, tree yes. <laughs> We're done with it. Still fresh. <laughs> like there's these moments where you're like, this Ooh. place is, you know, it's not a five-star chef. It's a working mm. class woman doing her best to make, you know, to feed these ungrateful, <laughs> these ungrateful little <laughs> We're going to have to sleep in the infirmary. Yeah, because they cut the heat off and the rest of it yeah. over the holidays. And there's no more food shipments, so we're stuck with what we're stuck with uh, yeah. until January, until everyone's back. Yeah. 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 And I, I love that. Now, of course, and now talk about trope. He, the Angus, his... Planning like like rich kids do, off to St. Kitts for Christmas mm -hmm. with his mother and father, or who we think is the mother and father, until mm -hmm. the phone call where it's divorce. There's actually there's been a divorce. Mm -hmm. Um, the mother's like, Hey, we need some time alone. What do you mean you need time alone? You got married in July. <laughs> like, so you yeah. really do kind of get a vibe of spoiled, awful mother vibes right and which mm -hmm. is a, again a, a, a trope we've seen a, a plot point we've seen in these movies my mother mm -hmm. doesn't care about me and that is undermined in one of the last scenes of the movie uh jillian vigman who is also uh on uh, one of the voice performers in star trek lower decks I'll yeah everyone know i uh, <laughs> She plays the doctor who's a cat. It's kind of awesome. I can't yeah, yeah. The character's name, but anyway, back to back to this. Back to her, the show we're talking about. I love the fact that you see how upset she is, and not in a indig, you know, entitled sense, but a I'm gonna have to. I it has been so hard to place my my ex husband, who I still care for and care for. 
I'm mm -hmm. responsible for him as I'm responsible for my son. My husband wants to ship my boy off to military school, you know, and is still willing to, as 70s parents did, <laughs> heck, even 80s parents, <laughs> mm. <laughs> just tell us. We know the boy. We know the boy is a little shit. Just yeah. tell us. <laughs> and, well, off to military school he goes. But you see how moved she is, how upset she is. And I loved that moment. Mm -hmm. It was like, wow, mm -hmm. Jillian, wait a, you have one scene and a phone call. And, yeah. And you, you deliver. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. And then, you know, the, the stepfather's Tate Donovan. Uh, yeah. <laughs> of course. And is in sort of douche mode there. But yeah, I mean, the, the, the threat of sending Angus off to military school is not a harmless one. It's not just a, you know, you're going to this and it's a little bit more strict off and they'll cut Vietnam. your hair. He might even die. <laughs> like it's sort of, it's very mercenary, and I suspect that it's it's um, inspired yeah. by the the stepfather. It's his yeah. idea, apparently. But yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, it's it's a little bit. Uh, it's well, very yeah, the stepfather, hard. like any once like a, any asshole. <laughs> yeah, it'd be good for him. It'll build his character without yeah. kind of you know do the math, buddy. Yeah, that they, they become officers quite quickly. Yeah. You know, that's what you take a kid out of military school, goes to military college and is on on the front lines in Vietnam. He's not going to be some the rear actual on MF. Yeah. <laughs> See your boys up the hill. What? <laughs> <laughs> Lead your boys up those that yeah. hill. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um let me actually, you know what? <laughs> Oh, Shashank's been in the chat. Oh, no. We've been chatting. Oh, Shashank. You know what? What the hell? Let's, uh, Shashank deserves an air horn anyway. Yeah. Um, but I did. What else do you think Payne is saying here? What? Yeah, what is he saying? You know, what is he, what's, what's his theme here? You know, I, I think part of it is, um, you know, and this is probably my own reading is, you know, I, I tend to think that most stories at, at their heart are mysteries, you know, in, in terms of motivation, what motivates this character uh, with the uh, Paul, uh, whole, when I, I keep on thinking his name is Hunnam. Yeah, it's Hunnam. Uh, his, uh, Dr. Hunnam, uh, his character, it's sort of like, what's his origin story? Why is the way, uh, why is he the way he is? Turns out he's as alone as Angus is. And I think there's something about that, that you have three people that are extremely alone and how are they going to cope uh, with the future? And I think there's something about, I don't know if it would be survival as much, but just that, you know, that, survival as someone who's not got a lot of support uh the last thing we see of uh, holdem in the movie is he's you know he's get a little bit uh out of chronological order here but you know he's on his way to he doesn't know where but he's probably gonna he check out some of these use well yeah well yeah carthage <laughs> Which is funny because Syracuse is a town in New York, but yeah. it's also a, a, a famous Greek site and and, and uh, something that he's been studying all his life. It sort of reminded me of, um, you know, if you've ever gone to church and you talk to these people and and priests and pastors and and that sort of thing, they've been studying what the events of what happened in a very small area in the Middle East, right? And a couple of times I've actually asked uh, a spiritual leaders, I said, "Have you ever wanted to go there yourself?" and this is simply like, oh no, I hate traveling. I thought, what? What? You have the opportunity <laughs> to actually go to these places that that you've been studying all your lives, and you yeah. like they took place on this planet, and there is every opportunity to to take and like we in live less in than a, a time day. and place where yeah. it isn't that hard. 
Yeah. yeah. And if you watch, if you go off season, then it's even cheaper. But, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's something that's achievable, like quite achievable. And uh, so it sort of reminded me of that. This guy's not really been away from maybe the, the he went maybe New England. to hide at Barton. He got, yeah. Like, how did uh, the, the Lydia character, how did she put it? There was mm. a moment. It was a, it was a nice little moment. She's like, life cat. She's trying to get him to be a little more sympathetic to Angus. She says, life catches up with them so quick. Well, oh, yeah. you know, almost like a, in a who yeah. are we kidding moment. She says, life catches up with us. Yeah. And I, you know, you see that have a bit of a hit on Paul. And I think, and I think that kind of set something up about, you've got three characters who need to let go of something mm -hmm. that they've been trapped by something. Uh, you know what? Of course, Mary grief over her son and she needs yes. to let go of her son, you know, to move on with life. Uh, the Angus needs to say goodbye to his father. Is not the same man he grew up with. That doesn't mean he will yeah. never visit him again or anything, but he, you know, he needed that moment with his father. Mm -hmm. uh, he also needs to grow up. There's a bit of a coming of age subplot in this flick. Yeah. Uh, although I think it's more of a slice of life, uh, a, a redemption story for Paul. Like he is the, the main character, but Paul needs to let go of Barton. Yeah. And yeah, he needs to let go of Barton and engage with life. He needs to get out of Barton. Yeah. You know, he kind of, he got burnt by life and mm -hmm. was given a place to, you know, be safe. Uh, but you got to wonder if old Dean Green, who believed in him and cared about him, you know, really meant for him to just spend the rest of his life there yeah yeah nope. he, he he at one point they're talking i think as he's settling in he's been invited to watch uh the um, uh what's that honeymoon game uh <laughs> the wedding uh, uh the newlyweds oh my god newlyweds yes do you remember um, watching that on replays yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> weekday and then, television late they would day? Al always say making whoopee which is hilarious <laughs> <laughs> worst there was phrase in the world but uh weird sidebar way more sex talked about in that movie or in that movie in that television show mm -hmm. than you know then i think in our more puritan times in many yeah. respects would be allowed like they were a lot more a lot of innuendo a and, lot of uh, innuendo uh, yeah, and yeah. people who are having fun with the innuendo yeah, and those are the shows Sorry. that made it to tape. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that made it to the, you know, I'm sure they had. There's a lot they left in in a safe somewhere. But uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, it. Uh, so he's settling down to watch watch uh, the newlyweds with Mary, and he says, "I really, I've always really liked." Is it? I think that's he who's talking to. You. I really like the aesthetic. Uh, you know, the, the 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 sort of the hermity existence, almost like monk a monk. You yeah, know, I'm just there with my books and my wisdom and my, you know, my own thoughts. And and I think there's um, and I think we all do this where there's time. And I think that's why winter gets on a lot of our nerves. Is that you're indoors a lot. You're you're doing a lot of screen time. You're doing a lot of, you know, or you can even do a lot of reading. There's such a thing as doing too much reading. You have to go out and engage with the world. And there's a lot of indicators that he spent too much time just in his own head uh, in this, in this uh, movie. Um, and, uh, and that, yeah, that, that it would be a good thing for him to. What, do you get think out of like dodge. when he, we get some very early shots. Like the movie starts with some shots uh, in his apartment, mm -hmm. with his preparation H, with his, you really do get uh, middle-aged guy vibes. Yeah. Yeah. Middle-aged single man vibes. I do not have preparation in my, <laughs> preparation H in my home, but I recognize some <laughs> Like the vibe in some ways. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
But when he's packing up his stuff and his multiple copies of Meditations of Marcus yeah. Aurelius, but when he's packing up his stuff, you really see how sad this room he was in really was. Yeah, yeah. And you, I think there it's almost like a great send-off. It's a, yeah, you, you need to get out of this musty, crappy little hole they stuffed you in. <laughs> well, he's so far in his own head. And Mary that when going, he... no, I like having a job, which is just a... <laughs> yeah. Well, and they're breaking each other's balls the whole movie, even at yeah. the end. You know, and that that's kind of a fun but thing, too. Is it kindness. Yeah, 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 kind of a wink. And, you know, and you don't get the impression that, like, with other... With, sometimes with melodramas, you can say one line and you're like, oh, that's going to set the person off. It's not that kind of movie here. Yeah. But, you know, he's so far in his own head that... You know, at one point, Lydia brings him some Christmas cookies and he literally doesn't he doesn't thank her for him and he doesn't know what to do. He just sort of nods yeah. and goes to put him away. And he and he actually holds on to them until he brings him to their little lonely one of their little lonely dinners. And uh, and because he doesn't know what to you know, what do I do with these yeah. colorful things? Look, this one's a mitten. No, <laughs> he's, he's trying to, you know, get some enthusiasm <laughs> going and something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Here's a, on that note. Lydia, who even others are like, whoa, you guys got chemistry. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we cut to Lydia's party, her Christmas party, where all of a sudden, you know, we're presented again. And is it an undermining of the trope? Maybe. Hey, the view with Drew is coming to the chat. Oh. Let's hey. uh, Ahoy, Ahoy, sir. <laughs> um, uh, the View with Drew, great channel. Uh, Jim, if you remember correctly, he shouted us out. Oh, this is months back, and uh, he does. That's right. Yeah. Every now and yeah. then, he does. He does these shout outs where he'll pick a few channels he really admires and uh, and uh, shouts them out. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, in, in a great, I, I think, just a great spirit behind that mm. and uh, yeah. it's great to great to see you here drew yeah very um, generous thanks yeah uh anyway uh back to uh back to what i was trying to say there oh my goodness uh about lydia oh lydia, lydia. The, yeah so you got lydia and it's almost this weird kind of shy you you get this idea that oh this is the shy weird mouse mousy kind of thing and then you see a bit more of her character in yeah. when she's picking up a couple of shifts in the local watering hole yeah yeah that's true yeah <laughs> where she's a lot more comfortable with others and managing others mm -hmm. and then the party and it's like oh this woman has like friends and a social life and everything well paul <laughs> giamatti goes oh there's a lot of people here and <laughs> and which is another good line delivery and and um and she says, yeah, only only you guys are from work, uh, which is kind of uh, refreshing. Like she's got an, in, as opposed to uh, hunt him or hold him, she's got an entire life yeah. outside of uh, school hours. Well, and, uh, you know, just to off, contrast Some are from here, some are from there. Like she's a yeah. social butterfly. Uh, mm -hmm. And so when you, when he learns yeah, this is not chemistry. <laughs> She's got a boyfriend. Yeah, you know it. See, I don't know. It hit. It hits harder. Yeah, you know. Wait I a minute. She's kind him. of a trap. Oh, she's got a boyfriend. Yeah, <laughs> you know, oh, just oh. as it sort of like, yeah, as it sort I, of dawns on him. I know. Like I, I can say I've been there, where yeah. I'm like, wow, is there something going on here? And even others notice it. Yeah, and then it's, and it's it has happened where I've reached. It was like, hey, so anyway, and just oh, I, I'm getting married next month. What? Yeah, or <laughs> let me introduce you to Pierre. <laughs> 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 yeah, been there. I mean, it's been a while, but I've been there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and but and I wanted to ask you though again it, back to that that moment. Mm -hmm. Almost midpoint of the film. Uh, there is a bit where 
I kind of struggled with it. So you got Elsa, Elise, no, Elise, the niece. Niece, Elise, oh yes, yeah. Elise. That nice. was even a line in the, a line in yeah. the film. Um, where they go down to the basement where the other kids are, and being all arty, and she's talking about purity while she's hitting on the kid. Yeah. Hitting on Angus. And I was like, kind of like, wait, what? And, and I, I couldn't, I was like, I, I wrote it down as I was, I was like, is this on the nose or is this maybe yeah. kind of the counterpoint to Lydia and Paul, like the, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Can, it, what, what did you think of that, of that little piece of that sequence there of, of the Christmas party? I couldn't, you know, uh, yeah, I was sort of concerned about her age because she seemed a little, a little young. And uh, uh, Dominic Sessa, Remember, who plays Ang Angus, is in high school. He's in high school, yeah. I mean, in real you life, know, he's 20, 21 or something like that. But yeah. you know, he's it's not like I'm Greece sure where they're the, all in their thirties. The player who uh, was playing Elise was probably probably a 20, bit older 21. too. Yeah, I don't know. I j I you know I sort of was questioning. Uh, you know, well that that was pretty quick, and you know, in terms of. Uh, girls taking the initiative i'm sure it happens but uh, you know i thought well that's that's kind of interesting yeah i i just i let it wash this sort of you know yeah. just to add something one of the interesting things about this movie is that relationships at no time are provided as an answer to any of their problems um absolutely whether, whether it's mary whether it's paul whether it's angus yeah. it's not it's not the kind of movie where if I just had somebody to go out with, that would solve everything. In the or if relationship, I, a, I need to find my solution in another person. In who another person, yeah. Me. Yeah, <laughs> who and that didn't happen. Me, and that didn't happen. You know, no. it didn't. It was sort of set up, and that's that's perhaps one of those undermining the, the trope is that it it was there to you know yes. the setup was there, but ultimately it it that's not the kind yeah. kind of movie it was. Well, and even the the moment. And there's Angus saying, okay, let's bring Mary back. I want to go back. There's a girl back there. Yeah. Uh, that I remember. A yeah. girl seemed to be into you. Mm -hmm. Perhaps, I, I can't say any girls ever as, as forward as Elise was, but you know when we're younger and we're mm -hmm. all kind of yeah. horny? Listen <laughs> You know, or just every now and then, woman's like, okay, this dummy is obviously not picking up the play and uh, yeah. I need to clue him in. I need to give him the old El Cabong. <laughs> I want to go back to the basement where the kids are playing pool badly and listening to ABBA. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, Jim, we are, we, we're, we're, I think it's time. We need Getting to, there. we need to, we need to get into final thoughts. Why don't you lead us off, my friend? Sure, I'm just looking at my notes here and seeing if I covered all the things that I wanted to. Uh, you know, it's got it's got uh, character development, it's got consequence, it's got a lot of those things. You know, the, everyone in this changes to some uh, some extent. To Mary even sort of comes to to a conclusion as you're saying they're they're letting go. So there's there's kind of a there there's the last 15 minutes I was watching and I thought well. Yeah everyone's back at school why do we still have 15 minutes like what's what's and then of course we find out uh, what happens to paul giamatti's character but um the other thing i would say is actually on the uh on on the design uh front is ah. is is the 70s kind of vibe of this and whether it's the whether it's the start whether it's the opening credits it's the font of the opening credits it's the presentation it's the, the sort of establishing shots of the you know it's the close-ups the it's the zoom and the soundtrack the sound design the soundtrack and and except i'd have to look at a listing but uh, you know we're always going off about soundtrack and it's really easy to choose a james brown song you know or, or you know a lot of times um uh, directors or, or you know people are putting together the movie they go for the most obvious songs of the time and i and i don't think they did in this case there are a couple that i recognize some i didn't no. and i thought they made some interesting it's choices the here style so. 
It's the yeah, yeah, the and that style is the, the style of music yeah. in the soundtrack is super seventies. Mm. It's it, one of the reasons I was so excited you mentioned that is, you know, one of the things I wanted to, I sort of picked up on, was that not only is it set in the seventies, it looks like a early seventies, late sixties, early seventies new, what they were calling at the time new Hollywood movie. Yeah. It's yeah. a little bit cynical. Mm-hmm. You know, it's got a kind of pre, like a, a, a cynicism about the changing social order. It it has even some of the moves, like when he is looking for Angus, Angus, he hasn't, Angus hasn't disappeared, but he was thinking maybe Angus disappeared. Mm-hmm. And so he's. Oh, he's they're watching Little Big him. Man too. So that was good. Little I Big just Man, watched it. Yeah, total. Just watched that last yeah, year. Yeah. So, but there's there's this great moment, Jim. They're watching, or the he's looking for Angus. This is at the school. Angus hasn't buggered off yet. Uh, they're at the school, and all of a sudden he comes out of one of the big halls, and all of his, and he's looking around. And oh, then, yeah, I remember the shot. I think all I know of a sudden, one. it zooms way out super quick. Yeah. And you see him run. Otherwise, it's all. It, so you have a couple of moving shots, a couple of pans, but otherwise mm. the camera is very static, mm-hmm. which is really of the time. The, yeah. Of course, the production, like it is set in the 70s without being. Much like the car, everything else isn't uh, super obvious. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Like it's not. Yeah. Oh, look at this crazy hairdo and yeah. the kids yeah. in their bell bottoms. It's no, it's more muted tones, a lot of mm-hmm. earth tones. It it looks like a seventies. It looks like a seventies movie. It's not 70s Avatar where you're bathing in the, uh, the 70s, you know, <laughs> at, a, at a car show or something looking at all the, you know, and Crosby, Stills and Nash are walking by. And yeah, no, it's, yeah, yeah. Um, I know what you mean. I, uh, yeah. That that it's, it's, uh, it's a lowercase 70s. Does that make sense? But it's not yeah. sort of like, well, it's, 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 it's yeah, it's not in your face with it. Well, it's not a nostalgia piece. Mm-hmm. Although yes, I think yeah. maybe Mr. Payne does have some nostalgia for that style of movie. But it's mm-hmm. not, let's all visit the 70s again. It's not shticky. Like, yeah. I think it really is him and his cinematographer and his production designer, they all, and they just immersed themselves in those late those new Hollywood movies and said, that is what we want. Yeah. You know? yeah. And it fits... I think the theme and the tone, it, it sets the tone of the story. It serves the tone of the story. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it, it, it seems not just a conscious choice of look what we can do, but a conscious choice of, we want to make sure people get the vibe because yeah. it does, there is a bittersweet poignancy to this. Mm-hmm. Paul does point out the hypocrisy, some of the terrible hypocrisies of the of the time, and mm-hmm. that you know the rich don't care, and you've got these the, that hint of people not like these students are you know dying in industrial accidents, dying in Vietnam, mm-hmm. uh, coming back with no hand, <laughs> you know, yeah. And uh, these kids are just going to go on with their blessed life. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the other thing I thought was, and I wanted to get, just get back to this. The reason I, and it's the only part, let's say, maybe a little, uh, a, a bitterness in my mouth at the end, my movie watching mouth, uh, a, a bitter taste at the end is, Here's another movie, much like No Hard Feelings, where the poor person has to give something up to save the rich kid. Oh, you know, yeah. And it's like, yeah. what? why? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And and that is where I, I see No Hard Feelings. I see No Hard Feelings oh, in a couple okay. other areas in this movie. But definitely at the end where it's like, 
okay, I get Giamatti does have to let go of Barton, but mm. that he's got to get fired for it, and and he's got to sacrifice himself to save this boy, mm -hmm. who yes, he'll be individually grateful, maybe, I mean, just grow up into a rich asshole, <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, I would say that. Uh, I would also say though that there's a and just in talking about this right now, it reminds me of that conversation that he has with Lydia at the Christmas party. Uh, and he says, you know, I think he says it to her and he might have said it to somebody else too, but he says, you know, I thought I'd make a difference. And it's become apparent to him that he hasn't made that much of a difference. Yep. And that's maybe a sign that him being fired isn't, you know, you have to assume, like to assume that he saved up some money. He can, you know, he can go traveling, but that 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 he's all almost sort of like, yeah, maybe. Yeah, I've never heard of anyone going broke on Preparation H. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, and maybe having a paid apartment and everything else, but uh, you know that that maybe he's coming to some realizations. And now with with him quitting and taking the fall uh, for Angus, uh, he's actually making a difference he's finally sort of actively putting his money where his mouth is i, I do mean it's a redemption a story and a yes, redemption yeah. and rebirth he does redeem himself because he was a bitter he was a bitter old yeah. for a lot yeah. of years a lot of these kids hated him his his colleagues don't like him you know mm -hmm. the only one who seems to sorry just a sec Oh, did you catch some of that? <laughs> did I manage well, to mute just take, <laughs> take care of that in post? Mute just after the burp. <laughs> um, that said, it's still kind of like it's a bitter, a little bit of bitterness. Mm -hmm. Not, I, I am happy for the character. Oh, this movie did move me. Much like yeah, I well, still, yeah. I'm still talking about no hard feelings. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's almost a year ago we saw that now. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, wow. Well, it was the last spring. Yeah, no. Yeah. yeah about no, March or so. Early early summer. Early, early, or April. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, you know, in a, in a nice oh, yeah. final touch is that he steals the Dean's uh, gift of uh, the, the fancy, uh, the fancy well, liquor. Yeah, <laughs> but. But didn't didn't you figure that thing was gone the second? Oh yeah, he got, yeah. He's got there's the a, there's a scene, and then ding. yeah, there's the light it hits it in a certain it's way. Almost, yeah. uh, there's almost a ping, <laughs> a little little starburst on an edge. It's Talk like, about foreshadowing. Yeah, yeah. that's uh, that's going. <laughs> that's out of here. Yeah, exactly. I I'm glad though that and this is one of the many things that impresses me about this film that. Pain has such a light touch. Mm -hmm. Whoops. <laughs> I'm going to set something off. Pain has such a light touch that it, um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Nothing feels really hard hit. Like this yeah. is, I, I, and not low arc. It's a high arc movie, but because everything's so ha handled so lightly, so gently, it's you you get the thing you get the symbolism of the <laughs> Remy Martin blah 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 mm. um but it's not oh and here's this big dramatic scene where it's thrown or it's used to hit someone or he yeah. gets liquored up and passed out and <laughs> or, none of that you yeah. have these the, more gentle moments Mm -hmm. And, and yeah. And also that he, he spits some of it out, but he'll also get to enjoy the rest of the bottle. He doesn't yeah. get rid of the whole bottle. No. no, he also didn't put the cap on when he set it beside him yeah. in the car yeah, seat that's... there. So All right, pre mad, <laughs> <laughs> you know, where's that penguin meme about <laughs> the joke was incorrect. Yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, Jim, is there anything else you wanted to add? No, I think it's just kudos to the 70s production values. It was awesome. Even the movie poster has that, the sort of the, the drawing style of an old movie poster. So, yeah. yeah, that was very cool. Very committed. All right. Well, on that note, folks, uh, 
Quick shout out to uh, Shashank and to uh, Drew from The View with Drew. Both of these folks have a couple of great channels. Shashank, it, just this awesome video on Jim. What's the filmmaker again? Oh, you're putting me on the spot. Uh, you know what? We up. will pin a comment right. in, in a pinned comment, folks. I yes. will uh, pin to Shashank's video and, of course, uh, also to uh, Drew's channel. Anyway, uh, thank you all very much. Uh, feel free to comment, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Good night, everybody.